Hi, I hope this video works out. I'm trying to video it myself and I'm trying not to bump the table. Um, I want to discuss my parasite that I've been diagnosed with. The parasite that I have is not a human parasite. It's called horsehair nematomorpha. It's a Gordian worm. And I've been suffering from symptoms for quite a long time, but I didn't know what I was what was causing them. Um, the first symptom I noticed was really being tired all the time really fatigued and I gained, started gaining weight and um, my thyroid started getting larger and I was choking on my food. My, uh, I had bumps on my arms, a lot of bumps on my arms, um, which I just thought was malnutrition or something and I just didn't feel like I was getting any of the food that I was eating and I've always been thin or been able to lose weight very quickly by just not eating sugar. But uh, over the last three to five years I would go to the doctor and they would say I had a, a high white count. It wasn't very high, but it was higher than normal. And I, when I would sing, I would run out of air. And that was the very first symptom that I kind of was started to worry about. And then I have bumps in the back of my throat. They're not like sores. They don't hurt, but they're just bumps. And if you pop them, kind of, they, they're just water fluid. And uh, if I would eat walnuts, um, walnuts are natural antiparasitic and they would get, I'd get bigger ones and pop them and they would just be fluid filled. And I, so one day I was eating some rosemary crackers I purchased and I could breathe easier. And my lungs actually felt good and I said, if this is something alive, if it, it's not alive, it wouldn't move if the rosemary oil in the crackers. And then I started, um, drinking spicy V8 and it has cayenne pepper in it. And the cayenne started making the back of my throat kind of squiggly, feel like something was moving. And I had been to several doctors over the last three years telling them I thought I had some parasites because I had just kind of w odd symptoms. Um, and I had been out of the country so I thought it was something that maybe I got out of the country. But as I've researched this and studied this um, and learned more about it, I believe it's a worm that is similar to hookworm and threadworm. And it, this is all speculation because it hasn't been proven, but the life cycle of this parasite is similar to those worms. It is about a, a month cycle, 21 to 28 day cycle, um, when the rashes will erupt and become irritated and the coughing. So what happens is, um, the other symptom that I had was like a heartburn. Um, every night, if I, as soon as I would sit down after about 20 minutes, I'd work on my computer and write my blog, and a burning sensation would happen, and I kept thinking I had heartburn. And I would find myself holding my breath. I'd breathe, and I didn't even know I was doing it. I would catch myself holding my breath and hyperinflating my lungs. And then all of a sudden, sometimes I would just, <gasps> just kind of gasp and take a, a large gasp of air, not regularly, just every so often. I had seen these same symptoms in my mother. She's on oxygen all the time and she's never smoked, she's never been in a coal plant, she's never been around asbestos, yet she has lung damage and they've never been able to explain why. So I went to a doctor and told him that I was having a hard time breathing and so he did a pulmonary function test and the pulmonary function test showed damage, uh, beginning stage of COPD, but they didn't know why. Then uh, they did a chest x-ray and it showed spots on my lungs. And all of the documentation for this and all of the actual reports are on my blog, thesecretisgratitude.com. And you can type parasite in the bottom search box at the bottom of the home page and up will come the, the documentation and all of this. Um, I kept going. I went to a different doctor because that doctor actually told me that the x-rays the and everything were normal. And I didn't, he never even checked for parasites, even though I told him I was pretty sure I had a parasite in my lungs. In the meantime, I had some Vermox, which is an antiparasitic for pinworms in the cupboard that I had from like 15, 20 years ago when my children were little. And I thought, I can feel these things creep into my throat, so they've got to be alive. So I took Vermox for a couple days, and I felt better than I have in 10 years. I felt so good for about two days. And then all of the adults that died, their eggs hatched inside of me and I caused a hyperinfection, a massive, massive infection with millions of these little things creeping around inside of me. And, but it was a good thing in the end because the only symptoms I had before were lung problems and because of this I have found m other major symptoms. It's affected my eyes, my head, my kidneys, 
got a bladder infection. Um, urgency that way. Um, more rashes. Some of the rashes are just like, like dry skin. You can look on my blog, but it looks like I just have dry skin on my hands, but this will actually, um, if I soak it in peroxide, up will come parasites, and you can see them under the skin. There's three phases to this parasite. The first phase is um, it gets in through the bottom of the feet. This is speculation on my part, but because of the life cycle is very similar to threadworm and hookworm, I'm guessing the etiology is the same. Um, I garden barefoot and without gloves all the time. And um, so I'm thinking it comes through the foot and it burrows through from the heart into the left side of the lung, which causes the heartburn and especially unrest. So I have such a bad infection that after I sit for about 20 minutes any time during the day, I'll have heartburn type symptoms. Um, then it got to the point where I was having chest pain, fluttering, um, I could feel things creeping and crawling, and that's how I discovered the peroxide. Um, I don't know if people believe in God, but um, I truly do because I, when I've had no answers of how to treat this, and every time I'd send in specimens, it would come back no known human parasite. So I sent in, um, I went, got to a new, I caused this massive infection, knew I had the massive infection, went to the doctor to get more Vermox to try and cure it, and you can no longer get Vermox in the United States for animals or humans. And so uh, I could have purchased some online and just taken it, but I knew at this point that my kids were having symptoms, my mother has symptoms, uh, family members all over the state have symptoms, all of my neighbors have symptoms, people I'd meet in a store, grocery store have symptoms, and, and I knew it just wasn't me. And so I told my doctor right up front that the reason I didn't want to treat it was because I wanted to find a cure that was legal for everyone to have. And I wanted a diagnosis. And he's like, well, we don't really need a diagnosis, let's just treat it. But I told him up front I wanted a diagnosis. So I held out, withheld doing any treatment of parasite medication because I wanted a diagnosis before we tried any of it. We tried sending up three stool school three consecutive stool cultures and I could see the parasites in the stool and they came back negative and I couldn't understand why when I could see them they were clustering together and they were clinging together and I, I put some in alcohol, I put some in tape, I sent them up in baggies, I did throat scrapings after I drank the V8 and it was all creeping and crawling and put it in alcohol and send it up and every time it would come back no known human parasite or a question mark. They couldn't diagnose it. So uh, one day I was not able to breathe. It felt like somebody was sitting on my chest because the parasites were so bad in my lungs. If I would flip over, I could feel them moving. It felt like a school of fish. If I'd move one way, they'd creep all that way. And if I'd lay on the other side, they'd go, I'll creep that way. And I said a prayer, and into my mind came this article I had read about um, somebody huffing hydrogen peroxide. And I don't recommend you do this. This is just, I'm telling you the story. This is how I figured everything out. So I huffed hydrogen peroxide that night because I couldn't sleep, I couldn't breathe and um, I could breathe easier. And you can't huff a lot of peroxide because it will cause your normal flora to die and you will get um, yeast infections or overgrowth with that. So I don't recommend you do that. That was just something that, because I was desperate and medical science hadn't found any answers for me. When they gave me steroids during my pulmonary function test, I could breathe better for a few minutes, but I felt worse afterwards. And Researching further, when you give someone with threadworm or a massive hyperinfection steroids, um, it can often cause the problem to be worse. So that made sense to me. So um, I haven't taken any inhalers or anything for my lung problems, but I have found that by having the hydrogen peroxide uh, just once or twice um, when I'm having that pain, it eases up a little bit. It doesn't go away completely, but I, like I said, I don't want to cause another infection with yeast. So um, after that, I started having eye symptoms. Uh, I ha woke up with lightning bolts in my eyes. Um, I could see little shadows moving across my eyes. When I look at the sky, I could see millions of little parasites flashing back and forth. Um, it wasn't like floaties. They moved fast. And um, I went to an eye doctor, and some of my neighbors were having the same symptoms. And I, I, when I get in the shower, um, for years, I would see little shooting stars to the sides of my eyes, and I believe because it's a water parasite, they come to the surface and are more active when you're in the shower with the steam and um, moisture on your skin and body. Um, 
the doctor said that he thought it was just keratin and floaties, but he actually said the worms th word there's the little threads floating in your eye, and the eye that I've had them in the longest, he said, like, yeah, there's a lot of them in that eye. And I have always been 20-20 vision, but after I got the hyperinfection, I went to 20-70, 20-50, and that's blurry. And I also can't um, drive very well at night. So, uh, eye problems, um, it got into my head where I would, one week, in one week, I left my, locked my keys in my car, left my keys at two different stores and almost at several other stores during that week. I um, lost my car in Walmart parking lot and was literally spinning around in the parking lot not able to find my car. Uh, that one was really hard for me. It was embarrassing. But, um, and I was playing a card game with my kids and I couldn't even flip over a simple card game. This parasite doesn't like rosemary. So at first I would rub rosemary where I was having the heartburn and then it caused him to go down into my gallbladder liver area and then I was having a lot of pain there. And that was one of the reasons I actually went to the, doc the second doctor, because I was having a lot of gallbladder pain. Sometimes the thread warmer herculum will set up shop there at the beginning when it's um, starting to get um, set, set up shop, so to speak. And the reason everybody has different symptoms is because it goes to where you're weakest and where it sets up. So if you touch your eye after you were outside and then wash your hands, maybe they went to your eyes. If you uh, touch your nose, my daughter has a rash around her nose for years now. and um, if I spray peroxide on her face and let it dry and spray it on her face and let it dry, she'll have the little parasite show up under her nose. I personally have the rashes on my hands, so when I soak my hands in peroxide, up comes the little parasites under my hand. Now you can see videos on my YouTube channel, The Secret is Gratitude, um, and there's videos of how I get the stool out of the worms out of the stool. There's videos of my hands with the parasite. On my blog, I have pictures of many people's rashes with the parasite showing up when you soak it with peroxide. Um, how it was actually diagnosed was um, I had given up. I couldn't, they kept sending back saying we can't figure out what it is. And they actually wrote on the report, quit sending up things like this. You can't just send up body parts and things. So um, I was really frustrated and uh, I just said a prayer. I was like, I don't know what else to do. I, I felt like God wanted me to figure this out. So. I, instead of treating myself, I just said a prayer and said, if you want me to figure this out, you're going to have to help me. I, uh, within five minutes, I went to the bathroom and wiped myself. And uh, this is very personal. It's not comfortable to talk about. But because so many people have this, I feel like the embarrassment isn't doesn't really matter if it saves people's lives. And so um, there was a sticky ball on the base of my thumb. Now, I hadn't felt anything. I didn't pull anything. I just wiped. And here is this ball. And I tried to take it off. And it was like one of those sticky hands you throw on the side of the wall. And, and, and I, as I started to pull it off, it started to uncoil. And I actually broke a piece off of it. And I realized it was a parasite. So I was going to put it in alcohol. And I felt a very strong, I call it a prompting from God or angels, whatever, who, whatever you believe. You know, I am scientific. I am I, but I do believe God has a hand in, in certain things. So uh, I, I felt really strongly to put it in normal saline. Now, most people don't have normal saline in their home, so I thought about it for a second and realized that contact solution is normal saline. So I actually squirted it normal saline in a baggie and put the parasite in the baggie, and when I measured it, it was about 8 inches long. And before that, when I'd seen them in my stools, the longest I'd seen was probably about 4 inches. Um, now when I dig them out, they're about an inch and a half. They're not... Uh, and it's because the larger ones aren't going to be where you, they're going to be expelled. They're living in different organs, and they affect all the different organs. I've had heart problems, lung problems, digestive problems. The third phase is, the, so the first phase is the lung. They crawl up the back of the throat. That's why my thyroid has problems, because I've been having so many of them in my throat. And it calcifies um, your thyroid and can make it larger um, in threadworm anyway. So I'm just using similar parasites, because this one hasn't been studied. There's only two cases worldwide, so there is no documentation, and those two cases only say that they found this worm. They don't say any symptoms that they had or any treatments that they were given. So my thyroid started to enlarge. I was choking on my food. My, um, like I said, my weight was affected. My, I'm tired all the time. Those are all thyroid problems. Um, so they crawl back at the throat. They make you cough. You have a dry cough, and then you swallow them, and they get in your lymphatic, and your lymphatic 
is all over your body, just under the skin. And so that's why people feel creepy crawly feelings under their skin, is because these parasites are in the lymphatic crawling around. Now, I went and saw a specialist, and he told me that I did not have a parasite 100%, and because I'd been on some anti-parasite medication for a month, and he, he thought that because I was on that, that I absolutely did not have a parasite, and he told me that they could give me some antipsychotics for the creepy crawly feelings. So I'm grateful I didn't listen to him, but um, right a week after that was when I found that 8-inch worm and had it diagnosed, and it came back because it was in the saline, I think they were able to identify it more clearly. And because it is not a human parasite, I think it was hard for them to distinguish with the smaller specimens. So I suggest you don't put it in alcohol and you don't get the normal parasite stool cultures because they don't come back positive. The, there is a video on my blog where I um, and on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, where I show how I dig the specimen out by put, pooping into a bag. It's kind of gross, but um, and then using gloves in a a knitting needle, I swirl it around and they, these worms coil. They like to coil into a ball. That's why they're called Gordian worms. They're like a snake ball. Um, and so they cling on to the plastic bag. They cling on to the toilet. They cling on to, the, you know, anything that they can cling on to. And so they cling on to when you swoosh that, you know, skewer or knitting needle or whatever you want to use, they cling on to it and then you can put it in a baggie with some saline or a specimen cup with some saline. And, and when you're sending it to the lab, send on there that you think it's a Gordian worm. Now, the best description, I ran into a lady today who is pregnant and has these um, and didn't know it, and she was coming to my house to buy something, and I felt strongly that I should talk to her about it, and she is actually seeing these in her stool, and she says, does, they look, does it look like, now I always called it celery because somebody wrote me on my blog and described it before I had my description diagnosis as looking like the strand of celery that you pull off, you know, in the little coil, how it curls up. It kind of looks like that, but it's not green. It, the girl today said, does it look like spaghetti squash? And that is exactly what it looks like. If you look on my blog and type in horsehair, so the secret is gratitude.com, and type in horsehair nemotomorpha, or just type parasite in the bottom of the search engine, um, and diagnosis, parasite diagnosis, up will come a picture of the video, the picture I have of the parasite in the baggie that I took in to be diagnosed. It is exactly, that is exactly what it looks like. It looks like the thickness of one of the strands of a spaghetti squash after you've cooked it. It's exactly what it looks like. But it coils, and so celery is a good description too because it coils like that when you, when you peel the cr it curls. So anyway, so those are the descriptions of what it looks like in your stool. Now I'm surprised she saw it in her stool, but she's on some pre prenatal vitamins that maybe have zinc or something in there that is helping kill them off. But um, anyway, that is the best description I've heard of what it it looks like. But you can look at my blog and look up my videos. Um, I wish I would now had videotaped the parasite in the baggie, but I was so freaked out by it that I took it immediately to the lab and had it sent up. And I and I did take pictures, but I didn't even think to videotape it. I wish I had now. Um, anyway, um, I have tried lots of medication, basically any parasite medication that you can find. I have tried um, ivermectin. I have tried a benzodol. I've tried um, over-the-counter Pinex Pyrex. Py uh, Gosh, now I'm going to have the brain freeze. Um, Pyrantin, um, Bill, Bill, Billitrin. Oh, that's not the right name. Actually, that's the last one I've been on. Um, Prezequintil, Prezequintil, something like that. Anyway, that's a. These are all legal prescriptions in the U.S. or over the counter. Now, I would suggest you read my blog about the side effects of those because um, the Abenzal made my hair fall out and my liver hurt and it's still falling out um, months later and you can see there's quite a bit of regrowth but um, it's still falling out and I will probably end up bald in the next two months or so. Um, so I would recommend you don't take that because it did not work. Uh, the ivermectin did not work. Um, the albendazole was $4,000 a month, I mean $4,000 a week to, to take and uh, ivermectin was about $400 a month, uh, sorry $400 a month. Now, I was on it for about two months of the two different drugs, alternating and sometimes together, and neither of them worked. I was on the pyrantol, 
uh, which is Pinex over the counter, and that just made him mad. And I may have killed some off, but what it did was kept me up for two nights with them burrowing out of my gut into my large muscles, and I did not sleep a wink. I was in so much pain as they burrowed into my muscles. It felt like somebody took a hot poker and was burrowing into my muscle. And then they would spasm, and I would have Charlie horses in all my muscles that they were burrowing into, and I could feel them as they burrowed out of my gut and lungs, and it was horrible. So I, I highly recommend you don't try that um, if you think you have this parasite. Um, the best way is to take it in a specimen cup to the doctor and suggest that they test for horse hair nematomorpha. Um, and they're going to think you're crazy, but send your doctor to this video or to my blog and have him read about the parasite and what I have tried because I would feel horrible if somebody tried all these medications and spent all that money. The last one I was on is Bilitrin. Um, I think that's the name of it. I'm kind of tired and it does do the brain fog thing. But, um, and that one did not work either. Um, it's, the reason I was hoping that one might work is because it's a tropical fish dewormer and because this is a worm, uh, water parasite, I thought maybe it would work. The water parasite, this is a water parasite. It, it's for insects and it, it affects usually um, hard-shelled insects like hard-shelled spiders, um, crickets, cockroaches, and grasshoppers. And it changes, that's why it's nematomorphic. It goes from a nematode to a worm and inside the host. And then it causes the host to commit suicide. And I really believe that this is uh, a lot of our nation's mental health issues because when it got into my head, I couldn't think clearly. I could not make it. Uh, I would slur my words sometimes. I'm I'm using some stuff that helps me. I've been using colloidal silver in my eyes to keep them from progressing worse. I can't. I already have a permanent blind spot, and um, I can't go blind. So um, I've been using that. The rosemary oil will just move them. Um, I put it on my thyroid every night because I want them out of my thyroid because it's causing so many problems with my health. Um, I do still have the peroxide if I'm having burning in my lungs, and I found that, like I said, it was just something I read years ago, and when I prayed, that's what came into my mind. I do soak my hand in bags of peroxide uh, about once a week to kill the nematodes in the lymphatic system, and there's videos on my blog about that, and there's lots of pictures on my blog about um, people who have also had the symptoms and soaked, and, and the, the pictures of their parasites coming up into the skin as well. That's just 3% hydrogen peroxide. You can get it at any drugstore. Um, I I would be highly amiss if I said use your own silver, and I only use one brand of colloidal silver that I truly trust, and I suggest that you don't do that. And <laughs> I, I'm hoping we can find a diagnosis, but the reason I'm making this video is I, I've called the CDC, I've called the state health department. I'm one person, and they probably think it was a a misdiagnosis. If enough people send in stools and get a diagnosis of this parasite, they will have to address it and look at it and find out where it's coming from. Personally, I believe it's the soil, and I think cats are spreading it. I have a lot of cats that poop in my yard, and when I garden barefoot or without gloves, I get rashes on my hands, and I can soak my hands and feet, and parasites will come up at any point. Um, I think that because I live in a dry state, um, that when we grow food in the garden and it's like melons or tomatoes or cucumbers that have water in them, I think that the parasites do like the water and will get in there. Um, weird thing, I have had many dreams at night about drowning, um, swimming and a, a tidal wave comes or a boat in a tidal wave will come or when I'm sitting at the day, I have a thought about um, just like message in a bottle or the guardian where the main character drowns and I don't know if it's because I know that this parasite does make its host commit suicide